Greetings and salutations. Once again, back down the shed. I've had enough of this uh, cheap paint. I want to hit it with some of this. Now, it's going to take forever and a day to paint this on with a brush. And you're going to have streaks. That's why I have an airbrush. Airbrushing is a skill that takes a little bit to acquire, but for this kind of stuff, it's fairly simple. You're not trying to be very crafty with it. You're just literally just laying down paint. But I have a little compressor. Now, I bought this, oh God, over 10 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, while I was still working full time. And this compressor alone back then cost me about a hundred bucks. You can get something similar now for a lot cheaper. You can actually get dedicated uh, air compressors for airbrushes, so they don't actually have a really huge PSI. This one goes all the way up to 100 PSI, but you only really need it to be about uh, 25, 30. It also depends on how fine you want it. Now, the other thing is as well with uh, airbrushing, it needs to be runny. I mean, you can't just grab this paint off the shelf. So thinnest, this is you know thinner for an animal paint. Don't pour it all in, you know, pour a bit of it pour a bit in, pour a bit of thinner in. Roughly got to be about the consistency of milk. The idea is you don't want it runny, you want it runny enough so it flows really good, doesn't clog up the uh, nozzles, but you don't want it too thin that you're just going to be taking forever and a day applying paint. This particular brand of nail dries pretty quickly. Um, you know, it tends to dry quicker than your aerosol can paint, but of course, it's applying it. Let's get to it then. Shut up, you. I could probably give that another coat. Uh, I might see tomorrow morning. Uh, some of those corners weren't fully sealed up after the rubbing, but nah, I'll be fine. It's, like I said, I can go back over a bit, maybe even just touch it up with a brush. But for the moment, I'm fine. Now, one thing you've pretty much always got to do, uh, some people say you don't have to do it, but it's actually good practice to do it, is, uh, so I've still got some material still in there. Um, clean, always clean your airbrush. Because uh, um, I can also tell you from experience, if you don't do it and you leave it, it will dry up and gunk up all that type of stuff. So you really will need to, uh, to get it done. Now, there are numerous ways to kind of do it, numerous different methods. Um, in the past, I've had a jar of uh, nets or of terps or something like that. And I'll just dunk it in and wash it around. But the good thing to kind of do first is, uh, oh yeah, if you can, get something to hold it on. Uh, you might have seen in the, on the speed through that I, I was just finding some place to put this down because because there's no lid on this one. Uh, so of course it's hard to put it down. And it's, it's even hard just to put it down anyway without paint going over. I mean, it don't, doesn't matter now because I've got most of the paint out. So, but just a bit of, not not a lot, just a bit of, a bit of turps. I'm going to put a bit too much. And what you want to do is uh, just basically want to run through. Um, I've actually turned them, that's the other thing. Uh, Always degas your compressors. Uh, I've turned this one off so I can just use the leftover. It quickly dissipates. So if you really want to give it a good thorough clean through, turn it on. You can kind of, oh, this is the reason why you wear dirty shirts. But you can kind of see it just, you'll get all that through. Uh, 
And if you have a jar of, uh, I'd recommend using clean turps when you clean it, but then put the uh, excess into a jar, preferably a glass one, because this stuff can practically melt plastic. But if, you, if you're caught in a pinch, uh, that's why I occasionally I like having you know, old bottles cut out the bottom. Yeah, um, I'm one of those builders who genuinely likes to recycle as much as humanly possible. So, okay, I'll keep like this and stuff like that. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna smush that around, give it a bit of a shake. It's, it's still getting some gunk out. Uh, so yeah, it's just a small jar, I'm just gonna... As you can see that... Oh, I don't know if you saw that. But yeah, that's dirtied all that water, and so that's going to be relatively clean. You see, it's still pumping that out, so if I just add a bit more... A bit more to that. As you can see, it's kind of it's pretty much clean now. I can. I'm gonna dump that in there though. Let it let it blow out because there's still gonna be a lot of stuff within that system. So you can kind of see it start to spurt out, and it's pretty much empty now. And close that up. Give it a bit of a spray. You know, if you really wanted to, you could pull this apart, give it a much thorough cleaning, but for what I'm doing now, uh, I might have to come back down and give this another coat, so I'm just not going to bother cleaning it up too much. Uh, that's probably more than enough. Ooh, oh there, Tiger. So, I'll turn that off for now. As you can see, this is actually the valve where you, you turn your, uh, your compression in. Now, there's two ways to degas this. You can use the actual airbrush, you can just squeeze it out, or there's this little pop valve in a lot of these. There's like a little ring there. All you need to do is just push that in, instant disgas. Uh, your bigger compressors, they'll usually have something like that, but it usually requires turning a valve or something. Of course, they have a lot of pressure, so be careful what you're doing. This type of one has a small amount of pressure, it's pretty fine to just pop it by hand. But again, yeah, sometimes I'll do it while I'm cleaning up, I'll just uh, also, one thing I might do is uh, that just pops off. I might just uh, just blows out some of that excess excess and just let that leave that to dry. And same with that. That's all. Right. Yeah, you can use it for stuff like that. It does take a long time. You see, I had to go over it several times because you know it's only really kind of like a an area like that and it's quite thin but it tends to leave the surface a little bit better than spray tins it does kind of diminish it's still kind of there in a small point but it still it diminishes the uh, orange peel effect uh, a lot of that's also it doesn't have the same chemicals it doesn't have the quite the same volume square cans are very good but you know the control is very lousy occasionally but for when you're just doing a wide, big project, they're fine. So that's pretty much it. Uh, also been working on my clackerboard uh, repair. I've made a uh, new part for that, so that's drying. Just used, again, didn't care too much about being high quality in that, so I just used some cheap paint and that will that'll fit. So I okay, can pretty much do that now. Didn't really want to, but I could. So, coming up, I will probably should do more uh, Mechleth uh, tests. to Because now that I know what the colours are going to kind of turn out like, I try and I want to get it, I still want to get a high, a more vibrant or a more kind of classic bright chrome out of the white. So, I'm probably going to try it with uh, some white. I have to see how much I've got. That's actually empty. So, this, so I think that's a full bottle. So I've got some white here, and of course, the the biggest problem with with white paint is that uh, you tend to need more layers. 
uh, essentially black can just hide very well, but white, you need to lay that up. So I'm probably going to um, sand back down the last white bat left I've got, and I'll paint that up, and I'll see how we go. And I've also got a grey one there. Tomorrow I'm going to go pick up a can of uh, gloss lacquer, or at least polyurethane lacquer, so I'm going to see how that goes. And once that's dry, I'll graphite that and see if that that pop that will pop. I've already posted my Ghostbusters chest piece, which was fine for that. Uh, in fact, having it a little bit dull was kind of kind of fine for that as well. So yeah, yeah, stick around, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and all that other bullshit. And hopefully see you around soon.